Hi, I'm Tom Kimball. And I'm Tracy Kimball. Welcome to MS Learn Online. Most gait problems can be helped to some extent by physical therapy, the use of appropriate assistive devices, and in some cases, medications. In the second of our two-part series on gait issues, Dr. Francois Betu talks about what can be done to address these problems. You are a physiatrist. What is a physiatrist? So actually, I've been told the correct pronunciation is physiatrist. Physiatrist? Yes, which okay. uh, uh, it's basically, uh, you know, I'm a physical medicine and rehabilitation physician. So okay. I you know, took special training in uh, what we call PM and R. And really, the role of the physiatrist usually is to uh, basically evaluate patients and design the treatment plan for rehabilitation and sometimes also often actually symptom management like spasticity. So, you know, there's a lot of therapists available, physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, and many times, say a neurologist or a family physician could refer directly to these professionals, and that's very appropriate. But sometimes the issues are complex, and you need somebody with uh, that kind of expertise to evaluate the problem and uh, seek out the right solutions and the right sequence of interventions and possibly change the plan if it doesn't work um, in process, basically. Talk process. to me a little bit more about some of the research and, and how that is uh, progressing. Well, there's a lot of research into the rehabilitation aspect. What are the, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the most useful kinds of exercises that people can do? Uh, there's also research into the devices, uh, you know, the braces that can be used, these electrical stimulation devices that I've been talking about, and more recently even robotic devices that can be used to train people to walk better. The nice thing about robots is that uh, they can do repetitive things many, many times and adjust to people's uh, particularities, I would say, or particular needs. Uh, but there clearly needs to be more research to uh, clarify who's more likely to benefit, how they should be used, and what really are the benefits so that we can inform our patients. You're all about movement and rehabilitation. Um, people ask me, I just want to curl up and be on the couch and I don't, I don't want to do anything. And I understand that psychologically, but again, could you just elaborate on the importance of keeping moving as the MS Society preaches as part of our slogan? Sure, I mean, our world right now is all about moving. It's probably more about running around. Uh, but uh, some patients feel they are disconnected uh, basically from that world because they're slower. Uh, one patient told me recently that, you know, when she was going out uh, golfing actually, she uh, didn't feel comfortable having a cane to help her walk, but then she felt that she was slowing down the whole group. So she tried to walk faster, but then her legs get stiffer and then she stumbled. So it, it shows why some people may just prefer to stay inside and say, well, you know, I just can't keep up. Uh, but then comes the problem of deconditioning that I mentioned before. So really we're pushing our patients, you know, everybody being different to their level of ability to get the maximum out of uh, what they can do. And we surprise some people by showing them actually what they can achieve with simple things like exercise. I tell people that when I can, I try and take the stairs instead of the elevator, but I make sure that there's a handrail. Exactly, it's always safety first. You don't want to be in a situation where you're gonna hurt yourself uh, because that could be a, a serious setback. So it's the safety issue and then getting the most performance, again, within reason. I think also some people set uh, unrealistic expectations because you know they say, well, I would like to walk the way I walked before. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not, but that doesn't mean that the, it can't be better. So I think it's about bringing everybody up to the best that their body can do. It's very important. So doctor, I'm a patient. I have gait issues and we're going through the normal course of pharmacology and uh, rehab. There are assistive devices that we can now use. Uh, tell me about specifically what some of those are and how they work. First, it's important to consider the image of assistive devices. Many people think that using an assistive device is a negative thing to do because it, it's kind of giving in to the disease or showing that things have gotten worse. And I can appreciate the psychology impact that it can have, but I try to re reverse the thought here actually to say it actually will enhance your function so you'll be able to do better. So actually you will be fighting the disease more by using an assistive device. And you know, there are simple devices such as a cane, could be also a walking stick, you know, that 
is more sporty maybe, you know, <laughs> and, but can be as effective as a cane. Some people use crutches. Uh, and sometimes, you know, to give better stability, you need to use a walker or rollator. Um, and then for some people, you know, having a power device such as a scooter can be wonderful when they want to go out to a sports event or go uh, to a mall. And then there are these, you know, braces that are also co uh, considered assistive devices such as what we call the AFO or the ankle foot orthosis mm -hmm. that maintains the foot in the right position uh, for foot clearance, for example. And then, you know, these um, FES devices to correct foot drop are also considered assistive devices and can enhance function. So there's a wide variety and it's all about finding the right one uh, for a particular person uh, that, in order to enhance their function. Thank you, Dr. Beitu, for telling us about the options that are available to help with gait issues. And remember that you need to consult with a qualified healthcare professional to get the therapy that's right for you. And of course, you can find even more information on the National MS Society website. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.